As she tries to settle the nerves of Tory MPs and calm the markets, Liz Truss has become an expert on the U-turn, a point put to her rather brutally by Beth Rigby on Sky. You've been in power for 28 days, but 10 of those politics was paused. In 18 days then, you announced £45 billion of tax cuts without setting a fiscal framework. It precipitated a £65 billion emergency bond buying programme by the Bank of England to protect pension funds. The pound tanked. A thousand mortgage deals withdrawn from the markets as interest rate, rate rates expectations spiked. You established a 33-point lead for Labour in the polls. And now the lady not for turning has announced a massive U-turn on a policy. This is surely the worst start of any prime minister. That was brutal. Oh, I think that clip's been seen about a million times on various social media platforms because it was just Beth Rigby reading out everything um, that Liz Truss had done wrong. And I think just talking about the space of time in which it all happened was just, yeah, very satisfying to watch, um, really. Um, Beth Rigby there was referring to um, the U-turn, which was made at party conference. That was on the 45p tax rate. But there have been many more since. The first and perhaps most significant is on benefits up rating. While Rishi Sunak had promised benefits would rise in line with inflation, it had been reported that the trust government was only planning to increase them in line with earnings. Nick Ferrari challenged her on this at Tory conference. Yesterday, you said that pensions will rise in line with inflation, but not the same, it would appear, with benefits. Why are pensioners more important than those who are on benefits? Well, I committed during the leadership election campaign that we would protect the triple lock, which means that pensioners... Yes. Uh, get either 2.5% prices or wages, whichever is the higher. And it's very difficult when you are a pensioner to adjust your income in any way. Um, people are facing higher prices. Of course, what we're doing on the energy price guarantee will help people uh, with those prices. Right. Now, but those in receipt no of decision benefits. has been made yet on benefit uprating. That decision will be taken in due but, course. But I will repeat that. So why are pensioners more important? than those in receipt of benefits. Well, they they different, can rest assured. People are in a different situation uh, depending on which stage of life they're in. And I think it is right that we made a commitment to pensioners that we would protect the triple lock. I'm sticking with that commitment. As I've said, no decision so, so, has so been made. So someone in their it. 70s is more important than a young mum with two kids? I'm not saying that at but all. But you just said I'm, eight different ages in their life. What did you mean, Prime Minister? Well, what I mean is when, when people are on a fixed income, when they're pensioners, it is quite hard to adjust. I think it's a different situation for people who are in the position to, to be able to work. So Liz Truss was refusing to commit to a specific policy on benefits, but it was clear she was laying the ground for treating those of working age very differently to pensioners. But thankfully, according to The Guardian... She's now on the brink of a U-turn. They suggest that a potential toy rebellion has changed her mind. Another confirmed U-turn involves senior personnel. When he became Chancellor, Kwasi Kwarteng controversially sacked the most senior civil servant at the Treasury, and he had planned to replace them with an outsider called Antonia Romeo. That plan has now changed. An official from within the Treasury will be appointed to the top job. This is how the Financial Times characterised the shift. They write, appointing Romeo as permanent secretary initially appeared to have the Prime Minister's support and was symbolic of her plans to challenge economic orthodoxy at the Treasury. But over the weekend, Trust dramatically reversed course, according to senior government figures briefed on the matter, and is now expected to instead appoint someone as the Treasury's top civil servant with years of experience of working at the Finance Ministry. She is now adopting a much more cautious approach as she attempts to persuade Tory colleagues and the markets that she has a grip. And there's a third U-turn. The government had initially said that they would reveal their plans on how to fund £45 billion in tax cuts on the 23rd of November due to panic on the markets and panic on the Tory benches. That's now been moved to the 31st of October. The Treasury announced that on that new date, we'd also get a forecast from the Office for Budget Responsibility. So yes, to unspook the markets, the Tories have planned another fiscal event on Halloween. I think it's going to be really difficult for her to recover her authority, and there are some structural reasons for that. The first thing is that Liz Truss has somehow managed to be the first Conservative Prime Minister in history 
to go without a honeymoon period. And it's because she cocked things up so spectacularly that she lost the lobby very early on. She's going to have to work against the grain to get them back. The second thing is that she's also managed to achieve something that every Labour leader since Gordon Brown has only dreamt of, which is create a set of shared economic interests between pensioners, homeowners, renters, benefits claimants, those in work and those out of work. And again, it's because her mini budget was this broadside against everybody. People talk a lot about the fact that in 2019, I think it was half of all Tory voters owned their own home outright. And I think that's something which is really relevant when you want to look at the differences in voting behaviour from 2001 onwards, the distribution of home ownership. Another thing to bear in mind is that financially waterboarding the other half of your electoral coalition is not smart politics. So you've got Homeowners who are still paying off their mortgages being impacted by interest rates. You've got inflation eating into everybody's incomes. And you've also got these really quite punishing real terms cuts in benefits. What that does is create essentially a coalition who are united in their opposition or at least their their lack of interest in a conservative economic platform. So that's where the sort of structural weakness of Liz Truss is coming from and why she can't just push things through because she's lost the lobby. And the Conservative Party, one of the reasons why they're such an effective election winning machine is that they will rally around someone who's popular, really regardless of who they are or what they're doing. And they are also mutinous when it comes to those who are polling badly. So that is a very dicey position for Liz Trust to be in. And I think that's why, you know, you've got this sense of a dog drowning in a paddling pool from her. She's finding it really hard to get a grip and control the narrative. I've seen that stat about you know, half of people who own their homes own them outright, which means they're, of course, not affected um, by interest rates, making mortgages more expensive. They will, though, have pensions, right? And I think what the, what was remarkable, what the Tories managed to do, was make it really clear that your pension is not safe with the Conservative Party because they announced their mini budget. And then on the Monday, it seemed like a bunch of pension funds were going to collapse. That's why the Bank of England had to intervene. There are very few people untouched Um, by the Tories' incompetence on this. It's bizarre they've gone to war with everyone, um, even their base, and for no apparent reason. You know, it's it's all in the interests of helping rich people. But even rich people aren't sure about this. Very, very bizarre. The one thing that Truss isn't you turning on is probably the daftest of her promises, and that's to stop the building of new solar farms. Land in England is earmarked as suitable for farming if it meets the standards of something called best and most versatile, or BMV land, and development of BMV land is generally not allowed. But now, the new Environment Secretary has decided to expand the definition of BMV land to include most of the land that could otherwise have been used for solar farms. If their changes go through, solar farms will be banned from 58% of English agricultural land. When asked about the story, the Prime Minister's spokesperson said this, I can point you back to what the Prime Minister said, I think at the start of September, when she said she doesn't think we should be putting solar panels on productive agricultural lands, because obviously, as well as the energy security issue, we face a food security issue, so we need to strike the right balance. Liz Truss operates in the interests of the fossil fuel lobby. She used to work for Shell. She is a headbanger when it comes to fracking. And that's despite the fact that pretty much everyone recognises that the cheapest forms of generating electricity in the UK are solar and offshore and onshore wind. Fracking is, as well as being you know, hugely polluting and uh, detrimental to the environment, is also relatively inefficient compared to those things. Um, so that's where this is coming from. It's got nothing to do with even what's popular with conservative voters, let alone with what the country needs. When you're talking about land use for agriculture, different kinds of land use deliver different efficiencies. So it's relatively inefficient to use loads of farmland for grazing animals. And I say this as someone, I'm not vegan, I'm not vegetarian, I do eat meat, but 
using land for the purposes of rearing livestock is relatively inefficient when you compare it to, uh, you know, cultivating land for the purposes of uh, grains, cereals, vegetables, that kind of thing. Um, but those are also relatively difficult to make a profit. Uh, UK agriculture is an industry which has needed a lot of uh, subsidies. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but it is clearly more important to, I think, prioritise this question of energy sovereignty, of divesting ourselves from the need for imported gas, which is, of course, driving up the cost of living for everybody, and being able to shift our economy onto uh, cheap, green, sustainable renewables. Um, that's clearly more of a priority uh, than having more space for beef. 